Apologies. He lurked in the shadows, waiting and hoping she wouldn't take a different room. This was a usual room. He knew that. He knew her. Ghost of Me, the new book by Amanda Steele, can be found at Amazon, Cobol, Waterstones and many, many other places. Apologies. Hi guys, this is Andy M. Live from Comics Unity. We first started Comics Unity on around about 18 months ago, with just me and Michael, and Amanda has come on board since. But the podcast is designed to cover the latest and breaking news in the world of comics, whether in relation to TV programmes, films, books, general news, and of course, comics themselves. Although a lot of our episodes are now on various platforms such as this, the complete archive can be found over at Comics Unity Podcast Series. And that's all one word. Comics Unity Podcast Series. Full stop. Bandcamp. Full stop. Dot com. Enjoy. Take care. Bye bye. Comics Unity. Hi guys, yes, this is Comic Unity. Indeed it is. Yeah, now people are used to me sometimes when I'm on, on Zoom today. I just got a label, not Michael, are they? Uh, no, no, we're not. Yes, I've got Michael here, and if Michael's here, it's Comic Unity. Mm-hmm. And this is something special today, because everyone knows us. It's usually me and Michael waffling on and Amanda using what we've been up to and what we're doing an interview today. Indeed we now, are. Now we've got somebody on the online that I first spoke to a couple of months ago before I spoke and label my author. Podcast and we had that much fun. We've agreed to do a comics podcast for today, Lucy, haven't we? So, so Lucy, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Tell me who you are and what's what led you on the creative path you're on? What's that? Oh, so I'm Lucy Sullivan. Um, I'm an author and um, artist on comics. I did uh, my main one is Barking which came out recently. Um, I wasn't originally doing comics, I did an illustration and animation degree um, at Kingston Uni and I did 2D animation. So I started off as an animation director, then moved gradually. That's a whole nother conversation about industries. But Steve moved gradually. Open label last time, we went on for 50 years about last time. Yeah, that's, that's a long one. <laughs> but oh, yeah. now, yeah. Mainly uh, write and draw comics. So yes. Yeah, now, obviously, we're here today to talk about Barking, aren't we? So now, mm-hmm. Barking, the history of Barking is covered in spoken over quite some depth. But we're going to go a different direction today with this. So obviously, first of all, tell everybody a little bit about Barking, where it all came from, and we'll start there. Hello. Uh, so it's uh, inspired by uh, I had a sort of breakdown in my twenties after my dad died suddenly. And um, the story kind of evolved out of that and watching other people I knew go through kind of similar experiences, not necessarily grief related, but um, struggling with their mental health. And then I combined it into a narrative. So it's a story of Alex Otto, who finds herself in a quite compromising position and is sectioned by the police. And then it's how she deals with the physical embodiment of her depression and grief joining her in the hospital. And um, yeah, the path she goes on with that. Ah, yeah. Now, Michael, what did you? I'm going to ask you first of all. Now, then, obviously, you've just read the comic last week when it came down the line. Yeah. How, what did you think about it when you first read that? I really liked it. I think the uh, the artwork, sort of, the sort of chaoticness of the artwork, really fit with the story. Yeah, and it did. Learn. I remember you telling me, Lucy, this is my financial, Michael. Is like it's all done in Byro, wasn't it? So. Yeah, yeah, the initial, so the character sketches and most of it is done uh, biro or I, with um, carbon typewriter sheets. So like old fashioned sheets of carbon and a, a stick and a quite a nice dip pen, which I could probably show you. <laughs> it's, it's, I found it quite an interesting when, let's go, what's about comedy? We looked at the structure of it today, all the artwork and stuff, really. But I was fascinated with Tom that last time. He did it that way through the company. Um, have you always done your artwork that way, or have you ever done it digitally? Um, I've I've always done kind of traditional work. So when I did two D animation, um, I would hand draw onto paper to get the animation going, and then I some some of it I coloured by hand. But that's crazy. Uh, it's a really long process. Yeah. So 
I did a lot of sort of digital stuff and textures and things like that. Um, but when I went into comics, I just, I sort of had a, a sort of serendipitous thing where I found a biro. I was teaching life drawing and I had to have a really quick way of kind of demonstrating to the people what I was talking about when they were getting the life drawing wrong. So I'd use a biro in a little pocket um, sketchbook and I just got really used to drawing with this biro and I just thought, oh, you know, if I get round to doing this comic, maybe I'll eschew the whole pencil section and inking and just go straight in with a biro. And there's something kind of, it's messy and it's quite liberating because you can't tidy it up too much. And I thought it just kind of really lent its hand to her situation and her mental state and what I wanted to do to play with kind of reality and and uh, psychopathy, I guess, you know, because she's in that um, altered state, as it were. Um, oh, yeah. That, that kind of feel of the character herself doing the actual drawings. Yes, yeah. Uh, it, it's sort of, that into that. Yeah, and because it, it smears, you can sort of, you can use the kind of blotches and sort of literally, like, a, some of it is just my thumbprint, like, smearing. Oh, it. Yeah, it's, they're quite messy pages. They're, I didn't, they're not laid out, so they're, they're literally sketched onto A2 and then laid out digitally. So it was all drawn just really quickly. It took me about, I, I think I drew the last six chapters in only about three months or something. Or, no, six weeks, I drew it. And then it took me about two months to lay it out. <laughs> now, obviously, like, I know you're doing it all on hand. Did you find then that, Kelsey, you were, you were putting down like an A, B, C on the, on the floor, weren't you, to try to work out, make sure you got the direction right on it? Yeah, yeah, so it was quite... What was changing what you went along then, really? Uh, sorry, say that again? Obviously, then, with it, obviously, the artwork itself, like you're doing it all on hand. You've been putting things on the floor, like in A, B, and C, won't make sure everything flows. Did you yeah. have the order change of the book? A uh, little bit, yeah, a little bit. And I think often, because you're going from script, because when you're writing it yourself as well, you go from script to, I go script thumbnail, script again, and then on to sketching. Um, sometimes I'll sketch something and think, oh, I've written that, and I actually don't need to do that. I can draw it much better and more interestingly or something would change. So I, I had to be pretty kind of loose with being aware that I could do something probably better drawn because I'm, I think I'm more an artist than a writer. So I think it, you know, what I can write isn't as good as what I could probably come up with once I start sketching. Um, and a lot of it was so emotive that I'd start thinking about something that happened or something I read or experienced that it would just change as I was drawing it and it would often get quite more surreal or darker or, yeah. So, you know, it was quite an emotional <laughs> way to draw. Yeah. <laughs> did you find that obviously, like, when you're doing, the way you do your art and on it, did you have to do a lot of, like, preliminary sketches for this all the time? Was it most of it done, done, done and dusted quite quickly each page? Yeah, no, they were done, because I did thumbnails, so I have a sketchbook that has like tiny thumbnails, I mean they're really, so I mean, you, people can't see what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm talking like, I could do the whole spread in a couple of inches, you know, like just wow. to get a feel of the shapes and stuff, but what I'd often get is I'd get a pose in my mind about what I wanted it to be, and I could, sometimes I'd get it first time round, but other times I'd have to draw it like three or four times, and there's a couple that ended up being an amalgamation of like six attempts. So one wow. <laughs> uh, it's right at the start where she's running and it's a kind of full splash page of her running and the dogs behind her. And the, like the hand is, the hands are from one drawing, the face is from another. And I had to just put them together on Photoshop because I couldn't nail it in just one wow. go because it's such a weird sort of looking up under her chin and it's such a weird angle that um I ended up just putting it together because I was getting so frustrated. <laughs> I was just like, no, I just... that, yeah. yeah. You so... you told us off mic before, didn't you? A lot of this is done like obviously through viral and non digital. So that's obviously the odd occasion you have to use Photoshop, didn't you, to merge Yeah, it. well Photoshop yeah. there to lay it out and then to add so a uh, uh, texture. So sometimes I had to put in um more ink textures. So what I had was like a a library of smears and smudges that I built up and when I needed 
to kind of blacken it or like the dog is built of smudges as well so he sort of sketched in carbon and then I use these kind of ink smudges to kind of really give him some texture make him feel more cloud-like because I if I drew it in one shot it just didn't have that kind of unusual feeling that I was really after as well and all the lines so all the all the panels are bordered with I have a page of lines that I've drawn out on carbon sheets and I just pick which one I want to use and start building the panels, which is why every spread is completely different <laughs> because it's sort of yeah. fitted in with the drawings and it's like a puzzle, you know? Wow. It kind of adds to, obviously with the story, it kind of adds to the feeling of the book that everything is different. Yeah, I, I was hoping it would sort of take you on a bit of a... A, more of a journey of each page you had to kind of really work at seeing where the flow was going to go and you know and obviously you can manipulate that um with the panels but I tried to let it kind of uh, lay itself out as organically as possible like once I got the sketches and could see which one was working best and then put them in and let them kind of feel their way around each other and then the the lines for the panels were the last bit but they really kind of lifted it and I think made it feel more like a proper comic, you know. Johnny, you got something that's Michael? I'm sorry, I want to show Michael oh, asking yeah, a question. No, I was, I, I've got I was just wondering, did, uh, did working on, obviously because as you said that some of it is from your own personal experience, did looking at it so sort of professionally and critically at from a sort of separated standpoint as a, as a work thing, did that sort of reveal anything for you? Yeah, um, particularly once I got, when I first started it, it was just me doing it in this room while my daughter was like napping and all my partner had it. So it, it was just like a backroom project. Um, but once it sort of, I got on with Unbound and then particularly when I had to apply for Arts Council, then it sort of really changed. And it went, I think that's when it became more, less about just me and more about talking about mental health. And it, it was a really kind of, it's an intense thing to do to apply for Arts Council funding, but it really helps you focus on the project and it definitely changed it. And I think it did heighten how professional I wanted to be about it because it had gone from kind of almost a set of zines to, to like, oh, right, this is like a proper graphic novel now. And I've got oh, to make this, this, is, this is an actual thing now. OK. This is a real thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I ask you, Lucy, as well, is it, on this obviously, I know you told me originally you did the script for this. It was done, done in the film script way rather than the comic script way. Did yeah. you find out the script changed much as you got into the graphic side of it? Yeah, and, but I did purposefully, the reason I wrote it as a film script is to keep it loose so that I had the option, like I said, to draw potentially something a bit more interesting because uh, most of the ideas for the book in the first place came out of just doodles I was doing, like, whilst I was watching telly or something like that. And it was sort of using that kind of surreal imagery that I just can't write, you know, if I sit down with a pen, I can draw it, but to sit down and go, and a, you know, a dog rears out of the shadow on the floor. It just, it doesn't, I can't, I don't have that kind of ability and people can, but I just, I don't know how to do that. I'd rather just draw it and go, this is what I'm talking about, you know? So yeah. So it, was, was the writing the hardest bit for you? No, it was the easiest because I, I sort of had no expectation because <laughs> I don't see myself as a writer. I was just like, I think the hardest part was not getting carried away with it because at, at first I wrote it like an actual, first I wrote it like a novel and then went, what am I doing? I'm spent, this is a graphic novel. I, you know, I've got to stop writing it and draw it. And then I went to the film scripts to try and, because my partner writes film scripts. So it was, he was really helpful in getting me to see it as a series of kind of, scenes and what I wanted to happen within each scene and that would be your chapter so it's like this is your chapter these are your scenes and it really helped break down especially with such a um, huge project you know like there's so many things you can potentially talk about it was easy easier to just limit but yeah the script bit I liked I like the writing but that's probably because I'm not very good at it <laughs> I'm sure it's probably best when you're <laughs> right okay Lucy I'm gonna ask you we're well, going to change topics now, okay? Because I know at the moment, since you've done this book, I know you're doing a project with Fraser Campbell a lot, aren't you? 
Yes, yeah. Back in March, I'm guessing that must be nearly done by now. Yeah, I think um, I'm a week or two away from handing it over to the letter. We've got Hassan uh, Otsman Alehu doing the lettering, so he does quite a lot of lettering. He's really great. So um, yeah, he's doing that next, and then hopefully we figure out whether we're kickstarting it or whatever. But it's Fraser's baby, so I was just brought in as an artist after their original artist Anna Redmond had to drop out. So, um, but yeah, it's called Indexed and it's like a light lo-fi sci-fi one-shot comic. It's, yeah, it's been really interesting to do. I've seen some of the preliminary sketches on it. Have you seen them, Mark? I haven't. Yeah, they're quite different from this actually. From Very what... different. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell us a bit about the process for that thing? So obviously, it, the stylistic, I can tell it's you, but it's, I can also say it's not you in a different way, but makes sense. So Yeah, very different. Um, so I sort of, I wanted to do something colour, and because it's a sci-fi, it's completely different from what I would normally do. But um, I did, when I was doing Barking, I did an oil painting course about paintings with light and colour. In fact, there's a kind of life model one, a red one behind me, but you just yeah, look at it light and and sort of work your way through. And I thought, oh, it'd be a really great way to make a comic and be really unusual. And I sort of, when I'm, I agreed to the project, I did some kind of preliminary stuff on Procreates and I thought, oh, i see how it look, you know, cause you can get quite a painterly look with it. Sent it to Fraser and he's like, yeah, it's great. Can I tweet it? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he tweeted it and it got a lot of interest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, everyone really likes this. And then there was a couple of articles of people who were very excited. Some people named it like, you know, the indie comic, one of the indie comics they're really looking forward to in 2020. And this was in November last year. And I was like, okay, so I guess, I guess that's how I'm drawing it. <laughs> so it was sort of that's like, yeah, and it was sort of, I thought it would be fairly quick because I drew it again straight in. But it was one thing when you're just taking like one character from it and just drawing it. But it's quite a complicated script. So it has taken quite a lot longer to draw than I expected. But I think it still looks quite, um, quite, quite painterly. Um, I've probably still got it up. So, I mean, no one listening will be able to see it, but at least I can. We get an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been really interesting to do, and I've certainly I've never used Procreate to this level before. I just used it a little bit for for mocking up things. And um, where's the page I'm working on? So this is you can just about oh, it's a bit bright. Yeah, look at that, Michael. There, isn't it? Yeah, it's very painterly. If I can zoom in, you can get a bit more of an idea. Of yeah. what it's like. so there's all the kind of black and stuff to it, but it's um. Yeah, it's barking. Bit... You can tell it's you. It's... They're very dark, this is in there for you, but it's the use yeah. of colour I saw in the previews and the your Twitter page that stood out to me. It's very, it's very, yeah. There's same, some, yeah. Uh, there's some bright colours in it. There's some, we're trying to keep it muted, but you when you read the story, I don't want to give any away, but there's use of bright colours to kind of highlight certain aspects of things, and then that's kind of fun to do to just have kind of splashes in yeah. there. As well. Before we move on, obviously, because we've got a few things we want to cover today. But um, I know, obviously, um, scripts, obviously, with Fraser. How does that compare to the script you did on Barking? You know, you, okay. I mean, Barking script was much more minimal, actually, wasn't it, I suspect? Yeah, uh, I mean, my Barking script was, you know, someone walks in a room, someone else is doing that, this is the dialogue. Uh, whereas Fraser's is, you know, panel one, this person is doing that, someone says that, there's the caption. You know, it's, it's properly written as panels so he you know he's a proper comics writer so but he is uh, used to so ian who he normally ian laurie who he normally <coughs> works with um isn't someone to abide by the rules so <laughs> Fraser will write it and ian will draw what ian's gonna draw and um when i said can i have a bit of a play with some of the layout because i think i could do something with this and that and he's like yeah you know i mean if you can do a little bit like what i've written that'd be great it's like no i've done mainly what you've written um but just occasionally i've changed something to just because it moves better or it flows better within the image but otherwise you know it's a really tight script and he really knows fraser really knows how to plot these things so well you know for moments so it's like a proper comic art job really and um yeah 
yeah, so it's obviously been like a completely different experience what you did, did with Barking and as I expected completely, so. Yeah, it's totally different. To me, you've learned so much from it as an artist. I think everything you do is, I think we talked about this last time, didn't we? Is that you learn about something yourself as a person every time. So. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And definitely in terms of um, how a script relates to the finished piece, it will definitely change how I write stuff. I don't think I'd write in terms of panels, but the next project I want to do myself is going to be quite a complicated idea. So it'd be really good to not have to figure out that layout again, but to know what's happening per spread, I think would be really useful. But also just, you know, like procreate's fun, but I really actually need the physicality of drawing. So I've already bought, I've got them stashed somewhere. I bought a load of dip pens for them. <laughs> the next thing oh, I right, do. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I need the ink, you know, it's just, it's so clean and you have to like, you know, whilst we're talking, I've charged my pen and, you oh. know, it's, it's another, it's another world. And I think it's one of those things that's really great as a tool because you can do some beautiful colouring on it. But I think I'd probably continue drawing traditionally and then just use Procreate for, for little effects and colour and stuff like that. But I doubt I'll ever draw a comic in it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, now, uh, I know Michael wants to ask you about Jeff and Matt as well. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you put that on me like you're not interested as well. Yes, but I know, I know you're the big, the really big Jeff and Matt fan as well. Uh, no, well, I was reading uh, Barking last week. It, it sort of reminded me of <coughs> Jeff's um, r run on Moon Knight, well, at least, at least it started it, when he's in the asylum. So it just, it just reminded me of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mainly, I th with um, Jeff and Myers, I mainly read Essex County, um, the full series. I've got, um, I've got a Descender and... Oh, I'm loving Descender. I've got, yeah. I've got the next issue in the way from Fort Worth and Planet, so I'm hoping that arrives and sat <laughs> Yeah, and uh, gosh, what's the Red Barn one? That's amazing. Um, um, oh, yes. It's so I'm good. I'm about the truth, uh, yeah. I wanted it because it's just been announced on Netflix. I forgot. Oh, uh, one of them. Sweet Tooth, is it? Not Sweet Tooth, is it? Uh, no, Gideon Falls. Oh, Gideon yeah. Falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is like, no, so, yeah, so Sweet Tooth is coming out and Black Hammer, which is the one I got to do a couple of commissions on, which was just amazing. And I love Black Hammer. I think it's just brilliant. And especially with Dean Ormston's work, it's like the perfect kind of marrying as well. But he does seem, Jeff's an excellent writer and an amazing artist himself, but he seems to have such a great eye for finding other artists and writers and stuff. I was going to so, say, how excited were you when he tweeted about your book? Oh my goodness. I mean, when I realised, <laughs> yeah, because he was actually one of, when I joined Twitter, he was one of the <laughs> sort of first people to follow and retweet my work, which was just mad. I know. And I put up a little um image of the dog or something i can't remember what i did um and yeah it was just crazy and then i realized he'd um back to the book at unbound and i just thought that can't be right and it, i checked it and it's like no it's jeff lemire <laughs> like okay so I, I realized i could dm him so i just sent him a quick dm just to say my god thank you so much you know I, i'm absolutely thrilled to have your support and that's when he said about and i said i was reading black camera and that's when he asked if i'd like to do a pin up on that I'm just like yes please <laughs> you know oh, i'd have done it for free but they paid me so there was even oh, like fantastic. so yeah they're um, doing the quote for you on the front of the book mm -hmm. What made you want to approach him to do the quote now? Well, yeah. uh, because he'd been super supportive and he'd um, regularly kind of tweeted updates and, and things about the project to help me get backers. He'd been really great. And my editor just said, what do you think? Do you think he'd do? And I was like, well, I mean, I can ask. And she's like, well, you'll have to ask by this weekend. And it was the weekend of the San Diego Comic Con. Oh. And it's like oh my goodness I knew from his Twitter feed he was just like doing about a million events he's like he'd put up a I'm sorry yeah, and with the best will in the world it's not like Jeff is the busiest man in the world at all you know? you know? and it was just like oh god and she's like just ask you never know so I emailed him and just said look I, I know you're doing loads and I'm so sorry but any chance and I just thought because one of the great one of the greatest kind of um 
sections of people that are affected by mental health problems is young men. And I think it's quite difficult. There's a lot of kind of autobio comics. There's a lot of comics talking, talking about things that women often read or uh, non-binary people, I think, are more likely to read. But guys still get a bit like, uh, comics are still, you know, I still want my comics to be this and this. And I just thought if Jeff was on my cover quote, it might just get some people to pick it up that actually really need to read it, but wouldn't normally go for that kind of work. So I did, I did say to him, you know, you might be the difference between someone picking it up or walking past and I'd really appreciate it. And he was great. He wrote an amazing couple of lines and it's been incredible. He put something on his Instagram that just yesterday or that he was reading Barking and Tilly Walden's uh, one book, Are You Listening? That's just won uh, the Eisner. I was just like, oh my God, there's my book <laughs> Jeff Lemire's timeline and next to a Tilly Walden who I just think is astonishing and, and there was a really great looking manga as well and it's just really? like wow yeah he's such a good guy and he just seems to really help people you know he's one of those people that's got somewhere but is still trying to bring other people up with him and you know what I like about him is and I've, I've never met him like you but like I like the fact is that he seems to do doesn't seem to be tied down to one company he just seems to be yeah. around all over the place and yeah, it's really interesting. He, he does like, he, I knew obviously in Rick and Rick Brother Moon Knight, these uh, Amazon Art of the Marvel. But I loved his last role in an Animal Man in DC. And it was talking about Black Hammer on Dark Horse, and obviously, like, what, he, what he's been doing in images. He just, he seems to operate yeah. his own type of way. He wants to do things, and I, I love him for that. Yeah, I think he's got to that position, which is just amazing. And, you know, God knows he's had to put the yards in to get there, though. You know, he's earned that position tenfold to be able to do that because he he was nominated for sentient which was with tko as well so you know i must probably every publisher but who wouldn't want to work with him <laughs> you know the man's I, I like the fact that jeff just seems to can i can i write that character yes you're cool <laughs> yeah yeah you know no, regard <laughs> what well, these days of people locking people down to exclusive contracts and jeff goes can i write that <laughs> I was yeah. well, they, before we move no. on from last topic today it's also back on your barking book was it was your forward when you got your friend mm. Nick Is that, I, 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 can't, I can never pronounce his surname a bad this no, I'll say it. yeah sorry Nick <laughs> 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 so I've asked this lecture you showing through How, I know you knew Nick already didn't you so what yeah. made you the good decision to get Nick to write forward for you Oh, that was easy. Uh, Nick was one of the main people to get me to do the book in the first place. So he was in my evening class when I was teaching life drawing. So Nick would come along because he keeps up his art practice through life drawing. He draws now on the subway and stuff. And it was between him and my partner, Stephen, um, saying, come on, you should just make it, you know. And I spoke to Nick about, I met Nick because I'd gone in to get um, a copy of Leica signed, which he won an Eisner for. And um, at my local comic shop in Richmond in London. And um, then he walked into my evening class like two weeks later. And I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> Nick of <Pontus. laughs> And uh, no one else in the class was a comics geek. And I was the only one just going, oh, my God, he's really famous. Because <laughs> he did Deadline. And, you know, I grew up reading Deadline. So it was really exciting. And we just formed an instant kind of friendship. And we're still really good mates. And... Um, yeah, when it finally got there, he also introduced me to my editor, Lizzie Kay, which she commissioned me at Unbound. So like Nick was over with his family from New York. We were having a barbecue here and he was like, oh, are you coming to the self-made hero party later? And I was like, no, because I'm no one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have an invite. And he's like, oh, I'll get you in. And he took me in as a plus one and introduced me to Lizzie and God, I met so many. I met uh, John McRae and wow. David Hyde. And yeah, it was like walking in. Uh, Hannah Berry was there and uh, Andy Oliver from Broken Frontier. And it was just like fame. Martin Rilson, Rob Davis. There's just a room full of famous comics people and me just going, oh my God, I read all of your work. <laughs> and this is like complete geek out. John McRae is like the nicest bloke ever as well. Yeah, this, what a nice guy. Great so. John. Oh, yeah. 
I've had yeah, lots, uh, I've had lots of work with Gareth Venus and I love it. I love his work with the show. Yeah, right, exactly. And and see, Nick's from that crowd, you know, he knows um, Garth Ennis and he knows all those guys from way back, from working at Marvel UK as well as Deadline. So, yeah, it was, um, if without Nick, I just wouldn't even have taken the plunge, I don't think. So, yeah, it had to be Nick, without a shadow. <laughs> Right, to conclude, I know Michael's got a couple of quick rapid fire questions. Uh, for indeed. You. I've yes. got one I want to ask you for a bit of fun at the end as well, but I'll let Michael so, go. Uh, it was just that it'd be fun to end on a few uh, interesting questions. So, uh, favourite fictional character and why? In comics? Uh, yeah. Or in, in comics? Uh, woo, uh, I say that and I don't actually know. Who would be my favourite? Oh, I think. Um, Probably, oh, my favourite comic really is Domu by um, Katsuhiro Otomo, who did Akira. And there's oh, two characters in that that are really my favourite. There's a, li a stubborn little girl who's only about seven or eight and a, an old man who is just naughtiness personified. But because it's Otomo, there's a lot of kind of psycho... Um, oh, what's the word? It's sort of the spirit, supernatural stuff going on as well. So yeah, probably the little girl in <laughs> in Domu. I think. Good choice. Good choice. She's young uh, and small, but she knows exactly what's going on, and turns out is quite the force to be reckoned with. So you know, I like underdog characters. I think. Uh, favorite comic movie. Ooh, uh, do you know, there's a few that you don't know that are comics that I think have done really well, like A History of Violence was oh, really tremendous. tremendous. And most people didn't even realise it was a comic. Um, I really like V for Vendetta. I know that's like not a, a, a I world... Like, I like it too. I, I like the fact that... Uh... Even the, even though they changed the character, even though they changed the actor playing the character, I think there's still a couple of scenes in there. Yeah, it, it still it still works, and I think I think as I never want things to be completely loyal because I think they should be adapted, and I think they should be able to move on to the next. Like like a comic is the comic, and the film is the film, and I don't think they sh they have to be the same. And I think you know, if I ever had the option, I would certainly do an Alan Moore and just sell it and go. It's up to you. I <laughs> just you know, unless I'm animating it, I'm not involved. But I think um, I think they often don't go brilliantly, which is always a bit tricky. I, I think a lot of, a lot of it depends on sort of who's adapting it. Like I love yeah. the Watchmen series. The Watchmen film. I, I, I love yeah, that I still, series so much. Yeah, I haven't seen the, the film and I've, we've still not watched the series yet. We are working through Legion at the moment, which is quite good. Uh, Mandal 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 Legion. Legion. I've not seen it, so have you watched Legion? Uh, yeah. I have, I have. Dan Stevens is very good in that. Yeah, some of it's really good, but um, I guess it's not really a movie. I quite liked, I thought Black Panther was fun. I thought Ant-Man was fun. My partner hates superhero movies, so he loves comics, but hates superhero movies. So it's, I have to watch them on my own. Like he went to New York in March, like during, just before everything kicked off, which was bonkers, where he had to go. So he teaches at Kingston Uni and he had to take the students on their annual field trip was to New York. Oh. And the uni wouldn't say they couldn't, couldn't not go and they would have lost hundreds of thousands of pounds so they went and they got one of the last planes back it was pretty it was pretty crazy to have done but i watched a lot of films then <laughs> so oh, you, caught, you caught up by oh, yeah i just went through it and um, yeah it was you know, i think they're good fun you know i quite enjoy it. and i watched the whole of umbrella academy which i've now watched twice because he's actually kind of interested in that so i i, I love the sort of x-men nature to umbrella academy yeah i think they you know and that's what i like about legion they're doing that kind of slightly different way about it but i think yeah umbrella academy as well it's, it doesn't take itself too uh, seriously season which, two's out relatively soon yeah end of the month i think so yeah definitely just i know um what is your guilty pleasure read 
Oh, um, probably kind of, I like quite a lot of YA stuff, you know, I quite happily read a kind of young adult fiction book. Um, I have audio books that I listen to on loop, you know, like, I mean, I can't tell you how often I've heard Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, like the full, I'll listen to the full series and I've read that a lot. And Harry Potter, I've got like, mm full play versions and you know JK Rowling's clearly a monster but um I really love her books and I really try to separate her and the stories but I love those and I've got the Stephen Fry version and that's a real kind of like if I'm feeling a bit stressed or whatever I can just listen to Stephen Fry read Harry Potter and I'm I feel better about everything <laughs> so well, well to quote the uh alert from a Scroobius Pip song thou shall not question Stephen Fry well, I, I agreed a hundred percent. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I had to written down at home. I can't remember. <laughs> Typical. I don't. I don't. I don't know what the questions were, Lucy. So I can't comment. Uh, what I'm, was your? I've got one to conclude with, Lucy. Before we ask you your contact people, people to contact you, is if you could cast your film, your your book mm -hmm. into a film, who would be your main character as choice actress? If you get any. Oh. Well, funnily enough, we were watching a program. Um, what were we watching? Oh, we watched a film the other night, and I went, "It would be her." We watched um, "Fighting with My Family." Have you seen that? Oh, yes, 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 yes. And Florence Pugh is just—I love her. She's just amazing. And she, we she, haven't. She, she's in the Black Widow film, actually. Is she? Yeah. Ah, There's a big rumour going she, around as well, Lucy. Have you heard this? The TV series. The what? The Sandman the TV Sand series has been cast, not been announced yet. There's a big rumour going around she's going to be deaf. Ah, oh, that would be amazing. I've just listened to the um, audible version of The Sandman and it's... I was going to ask you how you're going with that. We're up to, we've, we'll listen to the first four parts. How are you going, Michael, with that? Uh, I haven't had time to start it yet. No, what is... Oh, I went through it in one sitting. Like, did I you? did it every day. 18 yeah, hours. I had, I had a week of drawing on indexed and it's perfect you just plug your an audio yeah. book your headphones in and just draw away and it was i just went through the whole thing in one go and it was great wow. it's like tw yeah 24 hours worth of <laughs> i know it's usually when i'm doing that sort of stuff if i'm doing doing i'm working i work from home if i'm doing my work i could just plug in what i want to but amanda wants to listen to that series with me so there's a case of we're doing uh, one episode a night that's the time we sit back and listen to stuff together what yeah. do you do with Karen Edgerton and John Constantine? Yeah, I sort of, I sort of liked him. Um, it's so tough, I think, with Constantine to get it right. Um, I, you know, I don't know that anyone has ever really kind of nailed him as yet, and um, it'd be interesting when that finally, finally happens. But um, uh, yeah, Matt, I, 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 I would, Matt Ryan has been okay, but he's not full on John. Yes, yeah, I don't know who it can be. They're just it needs to be someone that just embodies that utterly worn out. Like do you know, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves was obviously not right then, but he'd probably do a better job of it now. You know, <laughs> like, did you just have a fifteen-year anniversary? Thing yeah, they did Comic Con yeah. last weekend. Yeah, that we I, had a big I, Zoom conference on it. Yeah, that was uh, you know that was one of the films I did like because it's got um oh gosh what's her name as who plays Gabriel in it? Oh um, oh uh, yeah, my yeah. brain's but, gone. Though. Yeah, she was just so straight as well. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, she's so um, good. Uh, Tilda Tilda Swinton. Tilda, Tilda Swinton, of course. Yeah. Yeah. She did a very good uh, film with Tom Hiddleston called uh, All the Lovers Left Alive, I think. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, so the vampire. So, yeah, uh, I, loved it. I loved it. I mean, I love a bit of vampire. In fact, that's my guilty pleasure. Anything to do with vampires, <laughs> I will read. Uh, <laughs> I've been quickly. mainlining Buffy <laughs> lately. So. <laughs> very quickly as well, and lastly, before we go to details, what did you think of Michael Sheen playing Lucifer in Sandman as well? Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think he works. I mean, I really like Michael Sheen. And um, I I loved the adaption they did of Bad Omens as well. I thought that worked really, really well. Yeah. Did you see and the that, I, David Tennant? Yes, yeah. Yes, which so, is just, you know, 
there's so many kind of lockdown things that didn't work, but staged was brilliant. It was just utterly the cameos brilliant. were amazing. Yeah. And also yeah. just the yeah. idea of going out and screaming in fields, I I really felt. You know, like I'm with you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> someone will call the. Police, so, you know. It's a good clue, Lucy. Anyway, it's obviously I'm, we're coming on taking more of your time up today. If people want to find out more about your work, where are the best going? Uh, so I've got a website which is lucysullivanuk.com. Uh, Sullivan's with two L's. Um, and my, I'm on social media, so I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and I've got a Facebook artist page, and that's all Lucy Sullivan UK, so at Lucy Sullivan UK. And the UK thing, just so you know, I'm not, I'm not Brexity or anything. <laughs> awful book written, well, I say awful because it's not my thing, but it's like a chick lit book called Lucy Sullivan is Getting Married. Um, <laughs> Like marrying keys or something and it just means that my name is virtually copyrighted because of that book so i find it really hard to get things in my name and so i had to put uk i know it's just like she probably just picked a name at random but it just turns out it's my name and i can't use yeah. it for lots of things so yeah thanks marianne <laughs> <laughs> right anybody well, thank you today lucy it's been a pleasure chatting to you again Great to chat to you. Thanks. And you, Michael. Thank you. Now, Lucy, do you want to join in with us when me and Michael wave at the camera and say bye to everybody? Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 bye.